Hello YouTube and welcome to the next root learning video. I've had to change the order of my planned video releases slightly. I was originally going to release a Glasgow Central Circular video and also a Glasgow to Lanark video before this, but due to the complexities and how time consuming scenario creation is, I've had to swap the order a little. So on today's journey we're going to be taking a class 170 from Glasgow Queen Street to Edinburgh. The scenario is AP30, the 2000 Glasgow Queen Street to Edinburgh and we're on the Edinburgh to Glasgow route. Our calling points will be Croy, Falkirk High, Linlithgow, Haymarket and finally Edinburgh Waverley. The class 170 has been in service since 1998 and was constructed between 1998 and 2005 by Adtrans and Bombardier and they are part of the Turbostar family of diesel multiple units. There are two or three coaches per train, though on the Edinburgh to Glasgow route they're usually in a three coach formation. The maximum speed is 100 miles per hour and there is an engine on each coach with a power output of 422 horsepower. Once in the cab of the class 170 there's not actually a lot that we need to do before we start. The main thing I need to do is put the reversing handle in the forward position. You've just seen that move on the left now. Other than that there's nothing that we really need to set up as the headlights are already switched on. So just to say that down here we have the combined traction and brake controller. There are seven steps of power on this controller and technically it should be a three step brake. Unfortunately it hasn't been simulated quite that way in train simulator and the brakes move a little more smoothly than they should. Up here we have the speedometer which is pretty self-explanatory and then on the right of that we have the brake gauge with the right hand needle indicating how hard the brakes are applied and I use this to try and judge where a step of braking should be so step 2 braking I believe should be at around 2.5 on the right hand needle there so if you take note when I'm driving that will be what I'll be trying to aim to use to slow the train down I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but the year that this scenario is based in is the year 2002 and so the reskin for the class 170 here is for NX Scott Rail livery and I believe this reskin is available from Armstrong Powerhouse. Starting from Glasgow Queen Street, the starting speed limit is 15 miles per hour. We've got just under 11 and a half miles to go to the first stop, which is Croy. And so now we've reached 15 miles per hour, I've idled the power to allow the train to coast until we can accelerate further. The total distance to Edinburgh from Glasgow Queen Street is 47 and a half miles. As you can see as we enter this tunnel here, this speed limit is going up to 30 miles per hour and we can accelerate in a moment once we see a slight gap in the tunnel itself. You can see the gap just coming up now. Now we've passed the gap. I'm going into full power to accelerate up towards 30 miles per hour. We are climbing here on a gradient of 1 in 50, which is quite steep and will severely affect our ability to accelerate. The 1 in 50 gradient continues for about a mile and a half, I believe, before levelling out. So with this scenario, I did make a slight edit. It was originally set in autumn, which at 8 o'clock at night made it night time, which I found was just a bit too dark. You couldn't really see a lot. And I really wanted to cover this route first in the daytime, although I may do a nighttime video in the future, as I do think this route has a really great atmosphere when driving at night. I just didn't, just didn't want to do it for this first video. So I've changed the season to summer and it's now daylight. As we approach 30 miles per hour, I'm just going to step the power back two steps to ensure that we don't break the speed limit. Just as we leave the tunnel here, the speed limit will be going up to 40 miles per hour. As we reach this overbridge, I can now accelerate up towards 40, so I've once again gone into full power. 
We are still climbing on the 1 in 50 up gradient, so it's very difficult for us to get to 40 before the gradient levels off. The Edinburgh to Glasgow route's always been one of my favourite routes available in Train Simulator. Um, I do feel it needs a slight update in terms of adding super elevation, which is unfortunately missing from this route. But the detail itself when driving at track level is really good, and I just really like the atmosphere. Unfortunately with this route, if you zoom away from the train too much and move away from track level, the scenery doesn't go too far away from the track. This route is definitely one that's designed more to drive from the driver's eye view than looking outside. The gradient has now levelled off, you can see we're increasing in speed and the speed limit has just gone up to 50 miles per hour, so I'm going to stay in full power until we get to 50 and then temporarily idle the power until we're able to accelerate further. The line now diverging to the left that we just passed is the line towards Fort William, so it's the West Highland line. And on the right here we're passing Eastfield Depot. As you can see the speed limit is now going up to 85 miles per hour so I'm now going to full power to accelerate to that. The speed limit will be going up once again to 100 miles per hour just before we pass through the next station. approaching Bishop Briggs Station and the speed limit is going up to 100 miles per hour. As I mentioned a little while ago, um, within the next few days I am hoping to do the Glasgow Central Circular video which will be in a class 156. In addition to that a Glasgow to Lanark video which will be in a class 320. Also very shortly I'm hoping to cover the Scottish East Coast Main Line from Edinburgh to Dundee and I'd also like to cover the Perth to Dundee section on that route. So there's two separate routes to cover on the Scottish East Coast Main Line add-on. In addition to that I'm hoping to cover soon the Newcastle to Edinburgh route and the East Coast Main Line from Peterborough to York which was made by Creative Rail and is based in the 1980s so I'm hoping to do that in a Deltic for a bit of a change rather than an HST. I am also still looking to make some documentary videos for Train Simulator which I've mentioned in the past. They've been delayed a little just to just because of how time consuming they are to try and make, but I am planning on making them soon. 
so I'm hoping to make a documentary on each route which highlights different landmarks on the route and gives you some history about the route. In addition to that I'd like to make a small short 5 to 10 minute video on each train just to give you some of the handling characteristics and more technical information about it just to help people to learn to drive the train slightly more realistically. So we just passed through Lenzi station and as we've reached 100 miles per hour, I've stepped down the power one step from step seven to step six, and this will maintain our speed at around 98 and a half miles per hour. So in the class 170, it's very, very easy to maintain speeds between 80 and 100 miles per hour. If we wanted to maintain 90 miles per hour, we'd go one step further down in power, and one step further down still for 80. As you can see, the dashboard or the cab there is just moving slightly forward and then backwards again, which is just showing how the train is trying to accelerate and then falling back to the speed which we're currently doing. So when you can see that happening, you know that the train is maintaining a steady speed. As we round this right hand curve you'll see a loop come off to our left here and at this point we're around one and a quarter miles from our stop at Croy. I'm going to idle the power as we pass the next signal and then I'm going to brake on the next point that we cross. Now that we're crossing this point I'm going to brake up to two and a half on the brake gauge. have increased just slightly to around two and three quarters just to try and ensure that our speed is coming off. Croy is towards the end of this left hand curve just coming up. now see the platform at Croy just coming up just ahead and at Croy we need to stop right at the end of the platform. Departing Croy, the starting speed limit is 100 miles per hour and we've got just over 10 and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Falkirk High. There are actually no speed limit changes between here and Falkirk High, so it's a straight through run at up to 100 miles per hour and it should take us around 10 minutes to get there.
At this point, I just wanted to remind people that you can find me on Facebook under PTG Rail, and you will find the link to that in the description of this video. In addition to that, if you'd like to support me financially because you really do value the work that I do, uh, then please do visit my Patreon page, the link which will also be uh, in the description of this video. It was suggested to me that I possibly start a Twitter page for the BTG Rail project, so I am considering doing that, though I haven't quite got round to it yet. Twitter's not something I normally use in my personal life, um, so it's something I it would take a bit of getting used to, to remember to log into Twitter and also manage that, along with the BTG Rail Facebook page. It seems uh, from the question I asked in the West Coast Mainline North video that many people are interested in the idea of me doing a Twitch TV live stream of a route learning session and so I am seriously considering doing that. If I do decide to do it then I will need to obviously plan it out first and I will also give you plenty of notice so that you're aware of when it's going to take place and hopefully you can try and make yourself free to join me and uh, watch it and of course ask me any questions while I'm uh, while I'm driving in the Twitch session. I am also still considering doing the question and answer video for West Coast Mainline Overshap Freight Run in a Class 92 and I'm planning on doing that in a couple of weeks time. Uh, so if you do have any questions then please do put them on my Facebook page uh, PTG Rail so that I can find them all easily to read them out and then answer them while driving the Class 92 which will be on an evening run from, Pre sorry, from Carlisle to Preston. I did just go slightly over 100 miles per hour for a moment there which is very bad of me so I just braked slightly to bring us back up under 100. I've now gone back into full power and I've now stepped down by one step, just to ensure that we don't break the 100 mile per hour speed limit again. Passing Greenhill Junction, the line towards Falkirk Grahamstone now diverges to the left and rejoins us just before Polmont Station, which is between Falkirk High and Linlithgow. Also up there is Grangemouth, I believe it's Grangemouth Freightliner Depot, and the line up towards Perth. I will be covering some runs up towards Larbert, which is as far as you can go along that branch uh, in some future videos. So I'm hoping to do Edinburgh to Larbert and also Glasgow Queen Street to Larbert so that you can see the different driving experience, different speed limits and just see a different part of this route. some sidings which have just uh, come off on the right there. Once we reach the end of the sidings which is just coming up we've got just two and a quarter miles to go to Falkirk High. We're now entering a straight section of track with three overbridges on it and I believe that was the first we just passed under and once we've passed under the third overbridge we've then got just one and a half miles to go to Falkirk High. As we reach the end of this right-hand curve, I'm going to idle the power. 
I'm going to apply the brakes up to 2.5 just as we pass this signal. So as soon as we pass the signal, I'm going to apply the brakes. Accidentally applied slightly harder there than I planned, so I've just reduced the brake force down. And we're now braking at about the right rate to slow us down for our stop. At Falkirk High, we do need to stop at the three-car stop sign, which isn't quite at the end of the platform, it's just a little before that. I have just applied the brakes slightly harder into what would be step three, just to bring our speed off slightly quicker. As you can see, we're just about to stop next to the three car stop sign now. Starting from Falkirk High, the speed limit is quickly down to 95 miles per hour. You can see the 95 board just ahead. We've got just under 8 miles to go to the next stop, which is Linlithgow. speed limit is now going up to 100 miles per hour, however the, we are now just one and a quarter miles from the next speed limit which is a reduction back down to 90. So we're not going to accelerate above 90 before we get to that. So if we do reach 90 before the speed board, I will cut the power by two steps to step five. That should maintain us around 88 miles per hour. now cut the power to step 5 to ensure that we maintain speed and as you can see the speed limit has now dropped to 90 miles per hour. We're now passing Polmont Junction where the other end of the loop via Falkirk Grahamston rejoins us and just coming up just ahead is Polmont Station.
The speed limit is now going back, back up to 100 miles per hour, so I've just once again gone into full power to accelerate. There will soon be a speed reduction back down to 90 miles per hour, but not for a short distance yet. At the 100 mile per hour speed board, we had just three and three quarter miles to go to Linlithgow. As we now reach the sidings, which you can see on the right, we've got two and a half miles to go to our stop. And three quarters of a mile to go to the next speed change, which is back down to 90 miles per hour. So I have just idled the power and I'm now braking lightly to bring our speed off to ensure that we slow down to 90 miles per hour in time. have now gone back up to step 5 power to help us to maintain speed and as you can see the speed limit has now dropped to 90. We now cross quite a long viaduct and at the next signal we've got just one and a quarter miles to go to our next stop. I am now idling the power. We need to look for the AWS ramp on the right, which we just passed. And then the second of these two walls, which we just passed there, is where we apply the brakes for our stop at Linlithgow. So I'm once again braking two and a half on the brake gauge. Just to take note that the speed limit has now gone up to 100 miles per hour shortly before Linlithgow station and you can see the platforms of the station just coming up. I have reduced the braking slightly to closer to 2 on the brake gauge as I felt we were slowing down just slightly too quick. Entering the platform at 25 miles per hour is about the right speed. We do need to stop at the three car stop sign which is at the end of the platform building on the left here. Departing Linlithgow, the starting speed limit is 100 miles per hour and we've got just under 16 and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Haymarket. There's one thing I have always noticed about the Turbo Stars is that the acceleration is pretty painfully slow. 
Um, where I live in Bexhill, we do get turbo stars in the form of a class 171 along my local line. And whenever I ride on it, I've always found that the acceleration is so much slower than the electro stars or class 377s, which we also get along my local line. The next signal I'm going to idle the power to allow the train to coast as we will then be just one mile from the next speed change which is a speed reduction down to 80 miles per hour. So now we've reached this signal I've idled the power and I'm just going to allow the train to coast. We will we will break for the 80 mile per hour speed limit as soon as we can see the next signal as the speed limit goes down to 80 just after we've passed that signal. I have now applied the brakes for the 80 mile per hour speed limit as you can see the signal just ahead and you can see the speed board just coming up now. Now at 80 miles per hour I temporarily went up to full power and then stepped down three steps just to ensure I was in the right power setting which is step four. Step four power will maintain us around 77 and a half miles per hour which seems to be about right. Rather than keep fanning the throttle up and down, I'm quite happy to just allow the train to continue at 77 and a half. We will shortly be going through a tunnel, and then just after the tunnel, the speed limit will be going back up to 90 miles per hour. As you can see the speed limit has now gone back up to 90 so I've gone straight into full power. With a three coach train in a class 170 by the time the train's power has kicked in you can be sure that the back of the train has passed the speed board. miles per hour I'm cutting the power down to step 5 to maintain us at this speed. 
the next speed change will be an increase back up to 100 miles per hour, just before Bathgate Junction. Now about to cross a long viaduct, I'm not sure what the name of it is, but I'm going to try and see if I can look it up and put it in the captions before I uh, process and fully edit this video. Shortly after the viaduct we will approach Bathgate Junction and we will then have overhead wires joining us and we will be electrified all of the way into Edinburgh. speed limit has now returned to 100 miles per hour and as you can see the overhead wires have started. The junction is just coming up with the two lines that are about to join us from the right, which you can see just there. There won't be any more speed changes now until we get closer to Haymarket. Once again gone down one step in power as we've approached 100 miles per hour just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit and so our speed will once again be maintained at around 98.7 miles per hour. Coming up shortly we will be passing through Edinburgh Park Station. passing through Edinburgh Park and I believe we've got around four miles to go to Haymarket. The next speed change will be down to 90 miles per hour. We're going to brake for that as soon as I approach the signal where two tracks join us from the left which are the lines towards Dundee and Aberdeen, the Scottish East Coast main line. As soon as that's joined us on the left, we're going to brake as we approach the next signal for a reduction to 90 miles per hour. The two tracks have now joined on the left, so I've now idled the power and I'm now braking for the 90 mile per hour speed limit just coming up. You can see the board just ahead. I've now released the brakes going into full power and then down two steps and as you can see we've now passed the 90 mile per hour speed board. We've got around two miles to go now to Haymarket Station. The next speed change we will get a Morpeth board warning for a speed reduction down to 40 miles per hour 
which will be about one mile from Haymarket Station. At that point I will idle the power and then I will break at the next signal. Now have the warning for the 40 mile per hour speed limit, so I've just idled the power to allow the train to coast. And now as we pass this signal here, I'm now applying the brakes up to 2.5, 2.5 roughly on the brake gauge to bring our speed off. On the left there we are passing Haymarket Depot. As you can see, the speed limit has now dropped to 40 miles per hour. We're now entering the station at Haymarket. And we need to stop at the three-car stop sign, which is just before the footbridge towards the other end of the platform. You can see the footbridge just ahead going over the tracks here. So we need to stop just before that. Departing Haymarket, the starting speed limit is 40 miles per hour and we've got just under one and a half miles to go to the final stop, which is Edinburgh Waverley. Departing Haymarket, you can see we're entering a tunnel here, which I believe is just called Haymarket Tunnel. As we approach 40 miles per hour in this tunnel, I will then idle the power the next signal just ahead is around a quarter of a mile from the next speed change, which is a reduction down to 35 miles per hour. It's also a third of a mile from the speed change after that, which is down to 20 miles per hour. I have now idled the power to ensure that we don't break the speed limit and I'm going to apply the brakes to around two on the brake gauge just before we leave the tunnel to try and bring our speed off for the 35 and the 20 limits. As you can see the speed limit is now down to 35 and I'm just continuing to break down as the 20 limit will come into force very shortly though I have reduced the brake force I'm using uh, more gentle braking. And the speed limit has now gone down to 20 miles per hour. And I'm just going to allow the train to continue to coast at 20. We've got the one more short tunnel just ahead, just before we approach Edinburgh Waverley Station. And I believe from the next signal there is no AWS all of the way into Edinburgh. now see the platform indicator there, indicating that we are cleared into platform 11. Platform 11 is a very long platform, and we do actually need to stop closer to the other end of the platform rather than this end.
I have just braked lightly to bring our speed down to 15 miles per hour. And I'll brake slightly more in a moment to bring it down to 10. So that I can keep an eye out for the three car stop sign. And ensure that I can try and stop next to it. You can see the three car stop sign now coming up just ahead. So we're now stopped in about the right place. Thank you very much for watching and I really hope that you've enjoyed the video.